Today we're going to talk about the top five fixes that the community would love to see in a Kerbal Space Program 2. But before we get to that, I think there's something that you've probably noticed for the first time in about 2,000 videos, many years of recording on YouTube. I'm here on the face cam, so yeah, hopefully you don't find that too off-putting. It might take a little bit of getting used to, but I really wanted to try something a bit different here. So let's see how that goes. At any rate, Kerbal Space Program 2 launched a little over a month ago now. I think five weeks, actually, nearly at this point. And yes, uh, a bit an understatement to say it had a very rough launch. It's still in very rough shape today, but uh, well, it is kind of getting fixed. We've had one patch. There's a second patch on the way. We don't know yet when that is going to arrive, uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so, but it should be fixing a whole load more things. Now, in the meanwhile, uh, the uh, community for KSP2 is very active. I've been looking at it on the forums, on Reddit, YouTube comments, pretty much anywhere and everywhere you can see uh, discussions on it. And in my time in doing that, I've noticed that pretty much consistently there are a number of things that people just keep talking about. So I've distilled that down to the top five most requested, most uh, well desired features and fixes for KSP2. So we're going to talk about those today. That, of course, are the cracking, game-breaking bugs, uh, mod support, performance issues, and unsurprisingly, or perhaps a bit surprisingly, a request for improved tutorials. And on the subject of learning things, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Here's a word about them. I love technology, especially the fields related to space and AI and I want to learn as much about these as possible. Brilliant.org then has been an amazing resource to learn all about this, and in a very interactive way. I've recently been getting into space science focused video games, many of you will probably be aware of that, so Brilliant's course on astrophysics is a perfect option for this. And with my growing interest in generative AI, it's great to see that Brilliant has a course on AI and neural networks as well. Now, if you have a technical interest in science, maths, or computers, Brilliant is an ideal resource for both busy people and professionals. It's an extremely effective way to learn. Currently, Brilliant are offering a 30-day trial, so visit brilliant.org forward slash obsidianant to sign up for this. The first 200 people to do so will get a 20% discount on the annual subscription. Do check out that link in the video description. Let's start right at the top of this list with the Kraken. Now, the Kraken was hoped to have been utterly destroyed, completely slain with the release of KSP2, and the community largely hoped that would be the case. In fact, if you go back through the developer diaries prior to the release of KSP2, you will notice that the developers themselves strongly implied, if not outrightly stated, that the Kraken was going to be annihilated, that it would not be a part of KSP2. Now, what is the Kraken? Some of you who are new to the community or who are new to KSP may ask. Well, a Kraken is essentially the monster that exists within the code of Kerbal Space Program. It manifests itself in the form of the complexity of the games of physics. So this will effectively destroy your ship or cause other negative impact upon your ship. You may do things, build your ship accordingly as planned. It should scientifically completely work. But maybe you launch your ship and upon launch, it combusts into a massive ball of fire. Or maybe you're just reaching the upper parts of the atmosphere and your ship suddenly falls apart. At any moment then, unexpectedly, the catastrophes can hit your ship. And these can be completely unpredictable and completely weird and this largely is a cascade effect down to due to the uh, complexity of the physics within the game some people uh, say it's down to poor coding or problems within the code itself um i'm not really up enough within the complexities of that side of the game to be able to uh, know that myself i just know that that monster does still exist in ksp2 now, unfortunately, at this point, I don't see that the Kraken is going to be able to be completely removed. It's not going to be annihilated, at least not anytime soon. It's there in KSP. The monster is inside of the code 
and uh, I think the best we can hope for in the short term and perhaps in the medium term as well is for Intercept Games to rein that code in, to rein in the Kraken. Um, so therefore it is uh, of utmost priority for the KSP community, it's a big part of uh, well, the discussions that you see around the internet and it does um, form a part of this list. So we're here with this being the, the first thing that I talk about of the top five things that the community want to see addressed in the future of KSP. And yes, that is the Kraken. Now in position four, directly related to the Kraken, in some respects and other times widely divergent from the Kraken, are the multitude of game breaking bugs. This is something that I'm not going to cite any one singular bug, but they are game stopping bugs that are preventing people from actively playing the game. In fact, uh, just this morning I was reading a rather interesting thread that was posted onto the official KSP forums, KSP2 forums, early March, and it has been very active since then. And the uh, post, the thread, was asking players how they play KSP2. Now, the question wasn't really asking about, you know, how do you play the game? I don't understand how to play it. The poster totally understood how to play KSP, but they were asking how uh, the community generally approaches playing KSP2, despite the fact it has so many bugs. So in short, you can't really go out and plan complex missions. You probably can't build massive space stations, at least not easily, without also facing numerous problems. Um, in short, you have to do uh, small goals. That was generally the consensus. Don't rely too much on the game. Don't rely even on save files because they may be corrupted. Instead, plan small. Plan small goals. Plan small ships. Don't do anything too complex. And hopefully you should be pretty fine. That seemed to be the general consensus. Another way of looking at this was that with the original Kerbal Space Program, players would generally go out there and face the challenges of science, the challenges of physics, learning orbital mechanics, all that other lovely stuff, in order to overcome the hurdles that are presented within KSP. That is uh, the science aspect of it, the massive learning curve. With KSP2, it seems to be a very different challenge, at least at the moment, and that is overcoming the hurdles of the game itself, the technological challenges, the bugs, that the game itself present to the user. So it's not so much about overcoming physics as it is about facing and overcoming the game. It is a direct uh, challenge in terms of difficulty. And that's where we come to another one of the issues further in, which is tutorials. We'll talk about that uh, in just a moment because uh, I'm briefly going to touch on that. If you're new to the game and you launch your ship and it explodes due to the Kraken, or if some of the interface elements such as the controlled maneuver nodes are a bit too finicky or if orbit lines disappear, if you're completely new to the game, how do you really know if that's a bug or if that's just down to your uh, lack of knowledge of the game itself? So yeah, that too is an issue. So the fourth issue is addressing some of the big bugs within the game. That is something that has definitely been happening with patch one. It's going to continue to happen with patch two. But I think that does definitely seem to be a massive, massive request within the KSP2 community. Number three is performance. Now performance has been improved with the release of patch one. Hopefully it will continue to improve with patch two and into the future. Um, when the game launched, there were some significant performance issues, players getting sub 10 frames per second in many cases, despite having extremely powerful uh, computers. And I myself have got an RTX 4090, a Ryzen 7 5800X, and often see around about 20 frames a second, or at least before patch one. Now with the latest patch, most of that has gone away. I can build in the VAB. There was a bug there previously where the game, when calculating delta V, if you put certain components on your ship and the game had to recalculate the ship's delta V, you'd suddenly get a massive frame rate drop. So add some solid boosters onto your ship and you would drop down to 9 frames a second. Add some wings onto your ship and you'd drop down to 5 frames a second, 15 frames a second, whatever. So massive drops there. That seems to have gone away. Um, but some of the performance issues are still showing up in other places. So 
For example, if you build a very large ship, or if you go to the website KSP Builds and export a ship there, import it into KSP2 and use that. If it's got a lot of parts, if it's especially large, you may find yourself facing 15 frames a second or less. I'm see, I've been seeing this um, again with a pretty hefty graphics card that RTX 4090 is still getting those at really crazy low frame rates. Um, I can't imagine it being much better on other PC setups. So performance, definitely something that does need to be addressed going forward. Uh, very telling actually that the big three issues out of five are bug and performance related. And then we get into more interesting territory. Number two, the uh, one of the top most things I've seen discussed on Reddit, on the official forums, on the YouTube comments, is indeed tutorials. Now this one is especially interesting because, uh, well, KSP2 was designed with getting newbies into the game. That was the whole point. That was one of the very big focuses that uh, Intercept Games and uh, Private Division actually had. And by and large, I do believe they have uh, succeeded with that. Some of the tutorials, which you can see on the screen right here, are really, really good. In fact, all the tutorials are really good. Uh, they're fairly simple in nature, in that they don't use complex terms. They actually managed to succeed very well in explaining complex terms in simple manners. So, yeah, this has helped people get ships into orbit very quickly when they've had absolutely no experience of the game before that. Uh, I found them very useful. I've got some experience with KSP-1. Uh, I can build a ship, get a ship into orbit, get it to other planets and uh, all the basics really. But nonetheless, these uh, tutorials in KSP-2 have been very useful. But the game's complicated. KSP-2 is not an easy game. KSP-1 is not an easy game. So these tutorials are needed. Uh, combine that with the fact where you've got the issue of these bugs and it's not always clear whether um, it's the user at fault or whether it's the game at fault. So yes, the game does definitely need more tutorials going forward. I think they can use the same sort of quality, go for the same sort of method as they've been using so far, but I think way, way more tutorials are needed. And that seems to be the general feedback that I've been seeing around the internet. So there we go with issue number two. And finally, let's move on to issue number one, right at the top of the list. Uh, I think this is right up there for many people. Modding support. So yes, it is coming further down the line. We don't have a date on when that is just yet. But I think it should perhaps come sooner rather than later. And there's a couple of reasons I feel this. And, you know, I've seen the community ask this quite a few times over the past few weeks as well. If you can get modding tools into the hands of the players, it really does allow the players to help fix some of the more major problems that are, well, game-breaking and preventing people from progressing through the game. So it would be a good move. Additionally, it would help players get that extra content into the game to keep things fresh and interesting. Now, I can kind of see why Intercept Games and uh, Private Division don't want to do this just yet. I think it adds more complexity into the game and it means getting a feedback for the uh, current issues that much more difficult because, you know, have people got certain mods installed, have people added this into the game, have people added that into the game. It just makes getting that feedback that much more complex. And I suspect that is a part of the reason that Intercept Games don't want to add uh, modding support in just yet. But I think the counter to that is that really KSP2 is in a bad enough state that the community could do with helping sooner rather than later. And I really do feel this is something that a lot of people would be happy to see, in addition, of course, to the extra content that adding modern support in right now would bring along with it. Of course, there are some mods available for KSP2. There's a list in the video description. Um, I might make a video in future going into some detail on some of these mods. If that's something that you'd like to see, do let me know. But just know that, yeah, there are some mods out there. They're not officially supported, but they are available. At any rate, I think right at the top of that list, modding support sooner rather than later. Please get to it. Um, do let me know in the comment section below what you want to see added into a KSP2. What fixes do you want to see at made? Do you want... Do you think performance should be right at the top of the list? Do you think the Kraken need to be reined in sooner rather than later? 
What do you think that um, developers should get other things into the game right now? Do we want to see uh, heating, re-entry heating added straight away? Do we want to see a uh, support for science added sooner rather than later? What way do you feel they should, they should go about it? Do you want to see new content or do you want to see uh, fixes first? Do let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching. And I catch you guys and girls next time.